I do want you to take us into that collaboration with the government because you've sat through many forums, many meetings uh, with the government. Because if you pay attention to the noise that's in the media space, you would swear that business and government are at war with, with each other. Talk to us about what goes on in those meetings between yourselves and government. There is a lot of engagement and um, I, I think there is a need for us as business to work together with government. Business can create jobs. It's difficult for government to create jobs now. They are very constrained. I think the only way we can create jobs is if we get confidence back because people are not going to invest unless there's confidence. And one of the projects that we've got in the CEO forum, we, got, we had four projects. One was to defend the ratings. Well, that worked pretty well until uh, 31st of March. Um, two was to help fix state-owned enterprises. Uh, let's see what happens on that front. Uh, three was a fund. We created a fund, a one and a half billion rand fund, which Brian Joffe and Adrian Gore co-chair, and that's off the, we raised the money and that should get off the ground quite soon and that's to help small and micro enterprise. And four was um, what we call YES, the Youth in Employment Service, which is to create 330,000 internships a year. We've got to keep trying and I think you've heard business much more vocal of late. Uh, there was a time when business was very quiet. I do want to hear your views on state-owned enterprises, particularly because you are a former DG of the National Treasury. In fact, I remember the last interview that I did with you when you were still uh, the DG, it was at the time that SAA was asking for a bailout. And I remember you on the radio saying, it must never happen again. Fast forward six years later, we seem to, SAA seems to be in a worse situation than it was when we spoke in May uh, 2011. I'd like your thoughts on what um, uh, Stephen is suggesting about reducing debt, uh, sell uh, some state-owned enterprises. Most of the problems, if not all the problems in the SOEs have to do with governance. There are decently run SOEs and none of them run to the Treasury for uh, for additional funding. I think that the notion that for you to have development, the state must own is wrong. Mm -hmm. For you to have development, the state must play the role it is supposed to play, which is to be a countervailing force in favor of the poor. Mm -hmm. So you take any of the SOEs and you take um, electricity and you would say, what is the developmental goal? The developmental goal is to make sure that South Africans have got access to reliable and affordable electricity. Does it matter then who delivers that electricity, whether it is the state or the private sector? Or is what it is that matters that it is the one who can deliver it cheapest and reliably, if that is your developmental goal? Mm. So, so, so. The state, does the state then, then not have a role? Of course the state has a role. The state sets a regulatory framework for the, uh, for the, uh, for the sector. It sets, it sets a regulatory framework uh, within which the private sector can participate in, uh, uh, in that sector. So the notion that says that the state must own in order for it to have development outcomes is uh, not grounded in development theory either. Mm. We are talking inclusive growth, we are talking, well, not we, but uh, some in the ANC, the president, in fact, is talking radical economic uh, transformation. We heard uh, the, Treasury, the Treasurer General of the ANC yesterday not actually issuing an emphatic rebuttal of the term radical economic transformation. The ANC will have you believe that it's the same thing as the National Development Plan. What on earth is going on from business's side? Do you have the clarity that you need as business? We have for a long time concentrated on inclusive growth. Um, and I think uh, as a policy position, that is the appropriate policy position for the country. Stephen has added uh, the word accelerated mm. to try to bring in a sense of urgency around, around inclusive growth. Uh, the country has a high level of unemployment, around 28% um, or so. The levels of education are quite low. If we're going to prosper as a country, if we're going to be competitive uh, internationally, we need to address a number of these, these, these issues. You cannot sustain 
a prosperous country with the level of unemployment that we have. You have a revolution coming down the line. So the question of broadening opportunity and including a larger proportion of the population in economic activity is fundamental and I think business is sold on the idea and business is committed to playing a role um, in achieving an outcome that is fairer, an outcome that is more prosperous for everybody. We believe growth is the engine that allows uh, these uh, kind of goals to be achieved. We do believe that terms like white monopoly capital, terms like uh, radical economic transformation are terms that take the focus of the nation away from the things that need to be done. If you look at the country, we got just under 16 million people employed. Uh, you know, 13 million are employed by the private sector. Business does play its role. I think, it, I think it can improve whatever it does. You know, if you really want to get transformation working properly, then we need to actually address the issue of inequality. We need to address, uplift people from poverty. And for that, we need a growth economy. You really need, as uh, the governor said, the governor, government is an enabler, creates a framework, mm. but you need business to actually run with the ball. Otherwise, we're going to get nowhere. There are lots of people who go to Davos every year. Every year? In January, in Davos, the World Economic Forum tables a report. They evaluate each country according to how inclusive your growth is. It has got very clear indicators. So you can measure whether a country is making progress towards inclusive growth or not. But we chose uh, in this country to call it something else. But that something else does not even have the word growth in it. And therein lies the problem. <laughs> At the heart of it is political will and political leadership to drive a reform program. Mm. That is what matters. Show me one minister of finance anywhere in the world who has been able to drive successfully a fiscal reform program. Unless you have got the cover of the head of state. When I, uh, when I was uh, in the Treasury, the South African National Treasury was consistently ranked amongst the top three treasuries in the world. I remember. In the world. And on one occasion was ranked the number one treasury in the world for the transparency of its budget process and all of that stuff. So. The chaps in the treasury are some of the finest brains that this country could ask to go and run that treasury. Leave them to do what they are good at. Mm -hmm. I think that we are in a country with a lot of potential. Mm -hmm. uh, this country is uh, well resourced uh, in terms of its people and in terms of the natural resources and the beauty that this country offers. We can leverage uh, on those and if anything, that is where investment should be uh, going into. The more we view unemployed young people as a problem, the more we are not going to find a solution. But if you turn that around and say a country with such a large pool of young people who are not engaged in meaningful activity is failing to utilize one of its largest resource pools, then we are changing the mindset because you are now going to be saying, here is this resource, how do I deploy this resource in order to achieve maximum benefit for the broader society? Then you are no longer seeing young people as a problem, you see them as a resource. And some of these initiatives that Stephen talked about can be scaled up, but more importantly, is to get the education system, the broader education system, uh, to actually be uh, working. <laughs>